Okay, so program access levels is kind of another complementary method to what we've been discussing the past couple of days. So we looked at users, particularly user roles and authorities and how they are linked together. We also looked at sharing and user groups and how we can apply different sharing settings to our different user groups in order to allow different levels of access. In addition to what we have discussed on these two concepts, we also have another one called program access levels that gives us an additional kind of mechanism to control who has access to our tracker data and in particular, how our, our system behaves in response to accessing our tracker data. So in this session, we want to describe a couple new concepts, all right? And we'll see where we get to today. Once again, I don't wanna rush you through um, all these concepts, okay? But the first thing we wanna do is describe the concept of what we call ownership inside of DHIS2, okay? Then we wanna describe what program access levels are, okay? So you might, you, as I say this term, you might not even know what it means and that's completely fine, all right? We're gonna define it here together. We then wanna describe how the concept of ownership, which is the first concept we will describe, and the concept of program access levels are linked together, okay? After we do that, we're going to discuss, the, there's four different program access levels, and we will discuss all four. We will see examples inside of DHIS2, okay? And then lastly, we want to show you how you apply these program access levels to your own tracker programs, okay? All right, so let's start by describing the concept of ownership, okay? And please ask questions if this is not clear, because admittedly, it's not always immediately clear. Okay, so when we speak about the concept of ownership, okay, it is used to describe access privileges when reading and writing tracker data within a program. This is in addition to sharing settings, all right? And the reason we do this, we'll get into in a moment, okay? But really, because tracker data, you know, we need several layers of security, basically, controls. Um, you might not need it in every system, right? But some systems need more than others, all right? Ownership always starts out as the organization unit that first enrolled a tracked entity into a given program, all right? So what do I mean by that? I'll just go to the next slide and kind of come back, right? You'll see the current owner of a tracked entity in the enrollment widget, uh, widget under the person's program dashboard, right? So when I go to first, let's just um, open up, open up DHIS2 here, okay? You'll see this owned by text in the enrollment widget, all right? And what this means is, in, in particular with the first users that I register, I'll go back to this user. When I register a user, or, or sorry, I register a tracked entity, I'm registering them into a particular organization unit. To start, this is the owning organization unit, okay? This can change, okay? But to start, it's where I in initially enrolled the tracked entity into my program, okay? And you'll see that in that widget, widget that when you open a record, um, you'll see this owned by text, okay? So ownership can be different for a tracked entity enrolled in more than one program, right? So let's say in our example, we've been looking at many different programs, okay? Mother attends antenatal care and she attends at one of the facilities that are present. A mother has TB, TB care is only offered at one of the hospitals. So they're registered in a hospital and the owner of that particular tracked entity in the TB program is the hospital not that facility that they're enrolled in antenatal care for, okay? Because you can have more than one enrollment, ownership can be different for different programs across the same tracked entity, okay? Hopefully you're with me so far, all right? And just ask away if you're not, okay? Ownership can also be modified by using the referral, um, the referral function within DHIS2, okay? So I'm just gonna go back here and, and just let me log into a, 
login with this guy here. Okay, this is my my user. Just take one of the ones I did. Okay, so in DHIS2, you have this concept of referral. Okay. Okay, and if I move them permanently, it will alter the owner of this tracked entity within this program. Okay, so right now it's owned by Cardinal Hospital. If I were to permanently move them to Hawk Primary Health Center, okay, the owner gets updated. Okay, so keep that in mind that you can change the owner um, from the initial point of entry. All right, and, and we'll get into this, why this is important in a moment, okay? So this ownership ties to the organization unit assignment that we make when we create a user, okay? So if you remember from a couple of days back, when we were making users, we assigned them capture organization units, analysis organization units, and search organization units, okay? And a user that has capture access to the organization unit that is the current owner of a tracked entity will also have right access to all the enrollments for that combination, okay? So if they're given sharing settings to capture data, they also need to be given capture access through their user role, through their user, sorry, okay? In order to enter data for that program, right? If they do not have capture access, for a particular organization unit, then they can't enter data within that organization unit, even if they have capture access to the program, okay? A user that has search access to the organization unit, okay, that is the current owner of the, the, the entity, okay, will be able to find that person, okay? So they can view the data, but they cannot modify enter, uh, anything entered within another organization unit. So what I mean is, Let's say that a person is um, um, registered in hospital A, okay? And that's the owner of that person, okay? And then the second person only has access to um, search data in hospital A, but they don't have access to enter data in hospital A. They will be able to find the person in hospital A, but they will not be able to modify any of the data that's there in hospital A, okay? So this is how the capture and search mechanisms tie to this concept of ownership, all right? So just remember, this is where we can see that ownership. And it just really means at the start in particular, where did I register this person, okay? And if another person entering data can't uh, uh, capture, does not have access to this organization unit in their capture settings, they won't be able to enter any data for any tracked entities in that orga organization unit. If they have search access, they can find them, okay? But they won't be able to modify their settings if they don't have the capture access. Okay, if they don't have search access and they don't have capture access, then they won't even be able to see this individual, okay, regardless of what other permissions have been assigned. All right, now this concept of ownership, the reason why I've described it is because it, it ties in very closely to the concept of program access levels. And just to kind of review and kind of make sure that it's hit, it hits home, okay. So if I go to a user, okay, this is what I'm talking about with our, our organization units, right? We assign them capture organization units, output organization units, and search organization units. If a person only has access to certain capture organization units, that's they can only modify the tracked entities or uh, new tracked entities, okay, um, in the organization units they have capture access to, okay? If they can search for a particular location, okay, then they can find the tracked entity. But if they, let's say, for example, here, this person can enter data in these three places, but they can search all of training land, okay? So in such a scenario, they will be able to, because of the ownership, modify or add any new tracked entities in these three locations, okay? But if someone is registered in anywhere else in training land, let's say they're registered in Woodpecker Health Center, for example, 
This person will be able to find them because they have search access to them, but they won't be able to modify any of the events or any of the other data that was entered in Woodpecker Health Center, okay? The reasoning behind that is the owner of this could be one of these other organization units. They have access to search, but not to capture, okay? So they can capture data within that program and those program stages, let's say, but only within these three organization units, okay? And that's how these, these, these levels link to the user when we create them. All right, I, I, hope, I hope so far, so good, okay? If not, you know, um, I see there's a couple um, questions in the chat, for example, all right? But we'll, we'll kind of try to tie this together practically, all right? Okay, so we, on top of this ownership, we have program access levels. And as I mentioned, we have this, these kind of additional layers of protection. It's because DHIS2 treats tracker data very differently. Okay, and that's why we sometimes, um, for example, recommend your tracker system is separate from your aggregate system. Okay, that's because there's so much we can do in terms of controlling access to the data, and that might need to be done based on you know national guidance or even legal um, kind of procedures in your country. Okay, to make sure we have proper access to the data itself. So, in addition to the standard features of metadata and data protection through our sharing settings, which we've just covered now, okay? Tracker data can be shielded with one more level of access protection via a concept we call program access levels, okay? But as I've been kind of mentioning, the sharing settings are still respected, okay? The user role is still respected, okay? But then we have this concept of access control through program access levels that adds an additional layer of protection on top of those concepts, with all of those settings still being respected, okay? So there are four access levels that can be configured for a program, open, audited, protected, and closed, okay? And we're gonna discuss each of these and the impact this has on the program itself. Now, before we get into that, I wanna kind of, you know, touch on something um, maybe a bit more concrete, okay? So we can see it in action. Right? So why do we have these program access levels? What does it actually do? Okay, so in healthcare, in, in digital health records, we have this concept called breaking the glass, all right? And in DHIS2, this concept is associated with the protected access level, which we will get into in more detail, okay? Um, but as a general concept, this applies not just to DHIS2, okay, this is kind of a, a universal kind of electronic health record concept, all right? So breaking the glass is an alert that occurs when, uh, you know, when you access, when an end user access is a record that is considered restricted, restricted, okay? And when this end user breaks the glass, they're required to document the reason why they are trying to access this potentially restricted record, okay? So what we typically mean by restricted and how we define it in, in DHIS2 is if a person is accessing a record that is outside of one of their organization unit scopes, okay? So the scopes we set when we create that user, okay? So if it's outside of the scope and they're trying to access this record, what do we do, okay? So well, we have this in place because we want to avoid disruptions in patient care, okay? Let's say a person is registered in one facility. They go on vacation, they go on holiday, or they go back home maybe, right? Then they attend another facility to continue their care, right? That, that particular user um, who's accessing their record might not have access to the record through normal means, but there's no reason not to enter or update their record necessarily if they're you know, following the proper protocols and everything like that. And you need to kind of go through this process of, of updating that record, right? So for example, a person could attend your facility without a previous referral, right? So by that, I mean, you know, they're attending facility B, they started their care in facility A. Facility A did not know they were leaving wherever the location is, going home, going on vacation, whatever it might be, and did not inform facility B. So facility B now has to access their record even though they were not registered in facility B, okay? Other situations might include other access issues account problems, passwords, authentication, et cetera, right? In the field, this does happen a lot, right? You just 
can't log in correctly, and then you can't access the record you need because you're the one who has access, or maybe you and several other people are the one who has the right level of access, but you're denied because of you know some type of, of access issue, right? And there are other circumstances um, that might also occur. For example, the provider is no longer able to provide that service in the, in the original facility, right? You can think of any other kind of systemic problems um, that might occur that might be a reason for someone to access a record that they did not initially have uh, or not should, should not be initially accessing. All right. So to kind of remove the theoretical constraints around this, let's just work through an example. All right. Oh, sorry. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to register somebody. Okay. I'm going to register somebody in one of the programs. I'll register them in the TV program, let's say. Um, I'll do it here, okay. So I'm gonna register a new person and take note of where I'm registering them, right? In Robin Primary Health Center, okay? So. Okay, so I've registered this person, Dan Smith, male, 38 years old, in Robin Primary Health Center. And let's say, you know, he receives his, his care. Okay, we identify him. Um, he has pretty mild TB, let's say. Okay. So, so far Dan set, he's received his care in Robin Primary Health Center. All right, I'm gonna log out of my user. I'm going to log in as a different user and I'll just clear my cache here. And you can see here to start, okay, this user that I've logged in, they only have access to capture data in insect district. Now, if you remember the person I added, Dan Smith was registered in Robin Primary Healthcare Center. All right, so this is a person who has a different level of access. Now, Dan started his treatment in that health center, but he showed up at Mosquito District Hospital and needs to receive his continuation phase of treatment. He needs to be reassessed, assigned a new treatment type and given the appropriate treatment based on that. Okay, so I'm gonna select the TB program. Oh, sorry. And I'm gonna search for Dan, okay? Now this person can search all of training land, but they can only capture within insect district. So let's just search for Dan here. It's male, okay. Just enter in some of the parameters that I remember from when I registered him. Now search for Dan. Now we can see Dan is registered in Robin Primary Health Center, which is not a record that this person has capture access to, okay? So I'm gonna click on this record and now I'm gonna break the glass, okay? A pop-up has came up and said, well, why are you accessing this record? It's not in your capture scope, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is just, you know, I, I have to enter a reason then. Well, why am I accessing this record, right? And this reason can be accessed later on, okay? So, um, Okay, so what this is going to do, it's going to give this user temporary access to a record that they didn't have access to, and we'll discuss the implications of that, right? So I've added my message, and then I'll select Add Audit Message. Okay, and then it's going to open this up, and I can see, here's the details in Robin Primary Health Center. Now, Dan doesn't have capture access to Robin Primary Health Center. He cannot modify any of the details okay, in this health center, right? What you can do though, this is the continuation phase. I'll select a report date, okay? The second event, so I've selected the same date, I apologize, but the second event is now in this user's facility. It's now in Mosquito District Hospital. And this person has capture access in Mosquito District Hospital. 
So they can modify the event, right? So let's just check in here. Dan is receiving community based dot, and he's still going to be receiving the same type of treatment, okay? And then we'll just reassess his culture and his colonies, okay? This person broke the glass, entered a message to access the record, and then they can register it for a period of time, okay? So in DHIS2, the default is three hours, all right? So after they perform this task, or they're accessing this record that's outside of their capture scope, okay, they can access the record for three hours. Now note, this is not the behavior for, for all configurations, right? This is associated with this concept that we call the program access level, okay? And breaking the glass is associated with the protected program access level. So there are other levels where if someone searches for a person and finds them and it's outside of their capture scope, something else will happen, okay? And we'll go over those differences in a moment. But I just wanted to give you an opportunity to understand, you know, how this gets applied in practice, right? And, and I will say, you know, not every implementation requires this for sure, right? But this is a general healthcare concept that's been kind of implemented this way um, within, uh, within DHIS2, okay? So what I wanna do now, I just wanna give you the opportunity to interact with this, just to kind of see it in action, okay? So you're gonna kind of work through the same steps I did, just register somebody new, log out, log back in, search for them, and then you should see the breaking the glass prompt in order to access the record, all right? So in order to do this, Okay, let's talk about the other, uh, let's, let's talk about each one actually. We just kind of briefly described protected, but let's talk about the different program access levels that are available, okay? Then we'll also demonstrate them, all right? So the first level of access and the one you're probably most used to is what we refer to as open access, okay? The open level of access, it allows anyone to search for and open records for tracked entities within a program within the search organization units that they have been assigned, all right? So as long as I am assigned the search organization unit, I can open the record. I don't have to add, enter any reason as to why I'm accessing that record, okay? So this might be the behavior that you're used to in most scenarios, and that's completely fine, right? If that's what you need to do, right? In a lot of scenarios, that's the really kind of accepted way um, for the program to behave, and that's completely fine. You don't need to enter in an audit message or something like this if you're accessing a record outside of your captured organization units, all right? The second access level is called audited. And this is very similar to open, meaning that I don't have to enter in a reason why I am accessing that record, okay? When it is outside of my capture scope. But what will happen is, when someone accesses the record outside of their capture scope, an, an automatic kind of recording of this will occur in the system, okay, on the data that's being accessed by that user, all right? So a new entry will be made kind of in the database log files about somebody accessing a record outside of their capture scope. This user does not need to enter any additional information, okay? The log entry is created automatically. And the log entry can be found within the database. It can also be found within the API, but that gets really messy, okay? It's the easiest way to kind of pull it out is within the database, um, this table I've identified here, okay? And it's not super easy to admittedly access, okay? But the idea is that, you know, when you have um, some kind of breach or some reason to review your security protocols, then you'd be accessing the audit log, right? Um, it's not something you do every day just to check. Right? But when you have a specific problem, um, not, not to say that it can't be improved, of course, how you access that log, but just to kind of be aware in terms of the initial conception um, of why it's currently um, implemented this way. All right. Okay, then we have the protected access level. And this is the access level we worked through a little bit. We showed an example of this where we break the glass in order to access a record. Okay, so this access level. This access level, it is slightly more restrictive, of course, than the others, right? If I go to access a record outside of my capture scope, I have to enter in a reason as to why I am accessing that record, right? So data inside a protected program 
can only be accessed by users if the or owner organization unit falls under the capture scope, right? Unless I enter a reason as to why I'm accessing that record, right? So I can temporarily gain ownership by breaking the glass. So I search for a record outside my capture scope, I find it, I enter a reason as to why I'm accessing it, and now I have three hours to access that record before I have to do it again, okay? The user then has to provide a justification as to why they're accessing the data that they see, right? And some of you might've seen this if you had an opportunity to work through the exercise. If not, you would have seen it during the demonstration, okay? Now note that when you break the glass, the owner organization unit does not change, okay? So the person, in my case, I accessed Dan Smith's record from Mosquito District Hospital, okay? He was registered um, in a different, in, in Robin Primary Healthcare Center, right? The ownership maintains itself. So the, Dan Smith is still owned by that Robin Primary Healthcare Center. It's just that one event that I added that's in Mosquito, for example, okay? So one important thing we have to consider also, Okay, depending on your implementation, this feature does not work in Android, okay? So whether or not the capture scope is defined or um, the access level is defined, okay? Basically, if I set it to protected and the person tries to access a record outside of their capture scope, rather than finding it and entering a prompt, you won't be able to open the record, okay? So on an Android device. So you just keep that in mind, right? If you're implementing Android or thinking about that in your own setting. Okay. The final level of access is what we call closed access. And this is by far the most restricted access level. Okay. So data recorded under a program with the access level closed will not be accessible if the owner organization unit, so either where the person was initially registered or where they've been referred to, does not fall within the user's capture scope. Okay. It is also not possible to break the glass or gain temporary ownership in this configuration. So you can't search for it and then open the record, enter a reason why you're accessing the record, okay? That only works for protected access, okay? It is still possible via closed access to transfer the ownership to another organization unit, however, right? But only a user who has access to the data initially, right? So they have to have capture access to the data in, in order to do this, right? They can move it via a referral, for example, but only if they have capture access to the organization unit where this tracked entity is registered, okay? But otherwise, people outside of this, they won't be able to open the record if it's, if it's registered somewhere else or if it's you know, in another owner organization unit, essentially, okay? So let's see how this looks in practice, all right? So I'm just logging in with that same restricted user. Okay, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna perform a search in a different program. Now this program is set up for open access. Open access means that I can search for people outside of my capture scope. And when I go to open their record, the record will just open, okay? So let's search for somebody already there. Okay, we can see here, Jaden here, he's registered in Cardinal Hospital, okay? This person does not have Cardinal Hospital in their capture scope, right? But when I go to open the record, it just opens, right? Because there's no access level applied to this program, right? I'm looking at a different program now, the immunization program, the record just opens as it should, okay? And depending on how you want this to work, you know, that's certainly a valid configuration, all right? The same thing happens with audited. The only difference is a log entry is made in the database, okay? But the behavior that the user sees is exactly the same between open and audited. The only difference is in the background. With audited, we have a log entry that is added to the system, to the database, okay? okay I can go back one more time. Okay. 
and then I'm going to switch to the antenatal care program. Okay. Now, this program is configured with closed access. This means any person outside of my capture scope, I won't be able to open their record. So if I go to search for somebody, I'm going to search for this individual. She is registered in Cardinal Hospital, which is once again outside of my capture scope. I'll click on this record and I cannot open it because this is configured as closed access. So it says no access to tracked entity instances outside of my assigned data capture organization units. Now I admit that message is not clear, especially if I'm an end user. Okay, probably something we can improve upon. But what it's saying is the person does not have access to the individual that you found because it is not within their capture scope, okay? They don't have data entry access to Cardinal Hospital Gateway, okay? They don't, they can't enter data there, so they can't access this record, sorry. That's the way the program's configured, all right? So what I want you to do, okay, is just give this a review um, by looking at exercise two. Okay, and as part of this review, you're basically reviewing both open and closed access. So you had a chance to review protected access by looking at the breaking the glass concept. All right, and now I'd like you to review the um, open and the closed level of access. All right, so. Okay, so let's just summarize what we've learned so far. Okay, putting together the concepts of ownership and program access levels, all right? So ownership and program access levels decide what happens when a user accesses a tracked entity instances, a tracked entity instance, sorry, um, that's been enrolled, sorry, I need to clean up that text, that's been enrolled in a given program, right? Okay, a user can access a, a, tracked, entity, uh, a tracked entity's program data, okay, if the corresponding owner organization unit falls under their organization unit scope, right? So what I mean by that is if they have access to capture individuals in certain organization units, then they can automatically kind of open up the record and modify data, right? With the proper sharing settings applied, okay? If they only have access to search for a person um, that's not within their capture scope, then ownership and the program access level will then determine what happens, okay? For program access levels that are configured with an access level of open or audited, the owner organization unit has to be within the user's search scope, right? So as long as a person can search or has the organization unit within their search scope and the program access level is set to open or audited, they will be able to open the record. Okay, for programs that are configured with the access level protected or closed, the, organ the owner organization unit, okay, so where they were initially registered or where they've been referred to permanently, it has to be in the user's capture scope, right? So if it's a closed program, as you would have saw with the ANC program, um, and it's outside of your capture scope, you can't even open the record. If it's protected, you will be able to access the record but you need to enter a reason as to why you are accessing that record, okay? So we can temporarily or override this privilege through the protected level of access, right? If they're outside my capture scope, but within my search scope, I can find them and I can perform this operation we refer to as breaking the glass, all right? And this access is granted for three hours, I saw there was a question about, you know, can we modify the, the time, all right? Um, so I think this has to be kind of modified at the, the application level. I'm not 100% sure um, um, how that would be modified, to be honest. I'll try to get back to you on that, all right? Okay, but the default is three hours, and then I'm not 100% certain how to modify that, okay? Well, I'll, I'll try to get an answer for that, okay? Um, DHIS2 audits breaking the glass along with the reasons specified by the user, and this is accessible via the database, okay? Um, however, it's not possible to gain temporary access when the access level is set to closed, okay? 
So we have these four levels. We're going to describe how to set them up now, okay? But when the programs are configured in certain ways, that's when we see these different things happening. We can open the record pretty easily with open and audited access, right? With protected access, we can open the record, but we need to say why. Okay, why are we accessing this record? If it's closed, we won't be able to open the record at all if the organization unit is outside of our capture scope, right? The owner organization unit is outside of our capture scope, all right? So hopefully, um, maybe the full thing isn't clear in your mind, right? But the ideas of ownership and program access levels are, are tied together, right? The ownership determines, you know, who, which the owner, owner organization unit is, and then the protected, uh, and then the access levels determine what happens when someone accesses someone who's owned in a particular organization unit based on their capture or search scope. Okay, so what we're going to do now, we're going to switch gears a little and talk about how this is configured. Okay, so we've seen how it works. Right now, let's talk about how to set it up. Okay. So for the moment, I'm still in the demo system. Okay. So I'm still in my demo system here. Okay, and I'm gonna log out of this user and log into my admin user. And I'm going to go to my program and I'll list my program. So we looked at three different programs, antenatal care, the TB treatment card, and immunization. Okay, now let's start from kind of easiest to most difficult. So the immunization program was open. So I'm going to go to immunization. And there's a little tab that we skipped in our initial configuration. Okay when we are working through creating our tracker program called access level, okay? And this is where the access level is chosen for our program. So if I select this, you'll see the four levels that I mentioned, open, audited, protected, and closed, okay? And hopefully this is starting to bring things full circle, okay? I had this set to open. When I searched for a person in the immunization program, I could just access the record as long as it's within my search scope. Okay. If I look at the other programs, like TB treatment card, this is where we had to break the glass. It is set to the protected level of access. Okay. This is this means if a uh, an, a user looks for somebody outside of their capture scope, they have to enter a reason as to why they are accessing that record. Okay. If I go to the antenatal care program, we'll see the same thing at the access level. It's now defined as closed, all right? And this means that I cannot access any records that are outside of my capture scope, right? Even if I can find them through my search scope. So we use this program access level, this tab access level, to define which program access level we want to give to the program. All right, so, so far, pretty straightforward, right? We select an access level, and that has implications on what a user can do when they access the tracked entities in my program based on the ownership of the tracked entity they are accessing, all right? We combine this with everything we've discussed about our user so far. So this includes sharing settings because those are still respected. This includes the user role they have access to. This includes all the different organization units that that user has been assigned to. So if I go to users here, now just find the user that's been doing all this stuff for us, okay? So when I scroll down, and we reviewed this a little bit, right? Have a look at this user, right? Their data capture organization unit is insect district. So they're able to capture data for any of the facilities within Insect District, but anything else will be outside of their scope, okay? And based upon the program access level that we configure, either open, audited, protected, or closed, okay, it's going to define what happens when a person looks for a record, okay? The next closely related one is their search scope, right? 
Here I've said this person has access to the entire country. That means they will be able to find anybody okay, within the programs, regardless of the access level. Okay? But they'll be only able to open ones based on the access level that's been defined. Right? If they had access to less search organization units, for example, if I said insect district instead of training land, then these access levels are really not as applicable, right? Because they can only find people within the same organization units that they register somebody, right? So they have to have a larger search scope in order to find these individuals, right? If I register somebody in hospital A, and then I look for somebody for a user who only has access to hospital B, um, they need to be able to search within hospital A, right? If they don't have access to search within it, then they won't be able to find anybody in that hospital. So if I want to give them a broader search scope like this, then they'll be able to find anybody within any, uh, within anyone who's owned by these organization units in this region. So any facilities in all of these districts, for example, or I could say the country, okay, allowing someone to find anybody registered in the country, all right? Then the access level will subsequently determine what happens when they access the record, right? So if they, if they look for anybody inside of Insect District, they'll just be able to open that record, okay? No matter what the access level is, okay? Because they have full capture access to this, uh, to this hierarchy, individuals in this hierarchy, and they have full search access across the entire country, all right? If someone then, um, register somebody in another organization unit, and that's the example we were going through, any of these other organization units, okay? Then the program access level is going to come into play, right? So this person can only capture data within this organization unit, but if they look for somebody in Panther Health Center, for example, okay, the access level will determine what happens. Will they be able to open the record? Will they have to enter a reason as to why they're accessing the record? Will they not be able to open the record at all if it's closed level of access? Okay, so we start to kind of put all these components together in order to build up access to the data in our system and you know control what people can do basically, right? Keep in mind that all these program access levels are dependent on them having sharing settings applied to their user, right? They need the program shared with them, otherwise they won't be able to see it. They need can capture and view access to different components of the program, or they won't be able to do anything, right? So if this person doesn't have access to the track density type, then you know none of this matters, right? You can set up the access levels, but they won't be able to do anything, right? So all those other sharing, uh, all those other settings are still respected. They still have user roles that are respected, and they still have user groups that they're a part of that are respected, where, where the sharing settings that are applied are respected. And on top of this, you have the program access level and the ownership organization unit that adds theoretically, if you need it, okay, another layer of protection, all right? So we combine several different concepts in the end to allow us to determine you know, what level of access people have to tracker data in the system, right? And we can be very specific using these different layers, right? Via user roles, user groups and sharing, and then our ownership and program access levels, okay? So it's quite a few concepts, but when we link them all together, okay, we can really be specific. Um, and that's the whole thing, right? We have personal identifiable information okay, in these tracker systems, and we have different protocols and procedures for accessing this information in different contexts, okay? So depending on what you need to implement and do, right? Sometimes you can just ignore these access levels, right? Let's say 70%, 80% of your programs is just open access, right? And that's, you know, it, it can be the case in many places, right? Then you don't need to think about it so much, right? But from time to time, if you need more information, um, why people are accessing records um, in certain situations, you know, then these access levels really, really come into play, all right? So, oh, sorry, didn't want to go there. So just remember to um, think about that when you're creating your program, okay? By default, if I don't click anything, so I create a new program, right? It's not gonna have anything and it's not a mandatory field, you can see, right? It's just going to set it to open by default. 
So if I were to add in all my other details and save my program, by default, it sets it to open, okay? So if I don't need to kind of consider it too much, then that's fine, right? Only in situations where maybe um, I, I need specific levels of access control, you know, then I would want to modify it, right? Because it's not a mandatory field, so you don't need to kind of, it, it'll just set to, to open by default, all right? But you can, of course, modify this. Just keeping in mind, you know, to get the behavior you want, make sure your users are also configured correctly, right? And your sharing settings are applied correctly, right? Uh, because without that, it'll be quite difficult.